We lost the Osprey extraction. We have the governor's daughter. We promised I would keep her safe. We have a militia group in close proximity. They will come for us. I wonder what this place is. No one here. Okay, but where did they go? Philip. See, I, I'm not muted. Okay, okay. You're no, good. You're good. Okay. Hey, brother. I'm, I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, look, I mean, it's amazing that we can do this, right? I mean, all things considered, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's as best, it's as closest to a, you know, in person as we can get, right? Right? Yeah, it's kind of great. And without the distractions of just all the stuff, and it's great. Yeah. Where are you at? I, I love your background. It seems like you're at a vacation home or something. Thanks, man. This is so, I'm in Bozeman, Montana. My wife and I have a place here. We grew up here and we, um, we came back here about eight years ago and this is my, my office. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Uh, you have beautiful yeah, scenery in the background. So it's fun. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk to you. I, I've been a longtime fan of your work. Uh, oh, nice, Jimmy. That's kind of you, man. Yes. Uh, like, you know what? In My Sleep is one of my favorite underrated movies. I've told Seriously? You. Oh, dude, yes. that's awesome. I, I I'll love tell, that I'll movie. call the director today and let him know. That's great. Oh, I love it. it it's one of my favorites, too. So, yeah, we, man, shoot, that was, okay, I mean, 2005, 2004, wow, I mean, cool. Cause I think you got yeah, I look, like I'm Jones. old, Jim. That's what I'm saying, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't look like that with that chiseled face and everything. Oh, thanks, thanks, bro. Never thanks. Age, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, hey, one thing I, I think the, uh, the the Tiger King should have taught us that not to mess with lions and stuff, right? I mean, if Joe Exotic would have known, then you should. Unbelievable, right? Like back in what was it, April, when we're all locked in our houses and losing it, and that thing comes out. I mean, I was sitting there watching it, and in the back of my head, I'm going. This could not have been better timing. I mean, it was just it was perfect. It was such like yeah. the universe was smiling, you know. So cool. So tell me about this project. How you, I like it. You're 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 going after it. You're you're wielding guns. You're shooting things up. It's it's a fun action flick. It really it is. is. Uh, what kind of got you involved in it? Um, how did the script come about? And, and well, so MJ Bassett and I we've collaborated on a lot of a lot of stuff. We've probably done you know we've probably done twenty. 223 episodes of Strike Back. Mm -hmm. uh, she came over and did The Player. We worked on Solomon Kane, Kane together. We were going to do a film before that called Lab Rats, and then everything fell apart in London. So, like, we've had a lot of history together. And she actually reached out to me and said, Hey, I, I wrote this movie called Rogue. I'd love you to read it. And I said, Yeah, cool. So I read it. And she said, Well, what would you think? And I said, That oh, was cool, man. It was a lot of fun. It'd be fun to play in that. And she said, Well, what do you think of Joey? And I said, Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. That's the role I really like. And she said, Well, I wrote it for you. I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's really kind. But didn't, I mean, just it, just idiot. Didn't put the two and two together. And like, kind of we left it there. And then a few weeks later, she reached out and was like, so do you want to do it? I was like, <laughs> you didn't what do you mean? It. Like, oh, you actually, you wrote it for me and you want me to follow through. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I just not putting it together, right? Um, so yeah, I, it was, look, that's a dream come true, right? When you mm -hmm. have a director you trust and love, love to work with, collaborate with well, and who can push you without, well, sometimes she pisses me off, but we put piss each other off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, normal. That, that's, yeah. that's part of a good relationship, right? Totally. So like, when you have all those factors and they say, let's do this, I mean, it's such a dream come true. So that's how it started. And we just kept chipping away at it. And the real green light was Megan Fox. I mean, she mm -hmm. rocked up and said, let's go. And the movie became something different. Do you know if MJ had Megan planned all along in a sense? Because no, I, like I, I, I know for a fact that wasn't the case. Megan actually reached out somehow. She got hold of the script. I mean, you know the process. It gets out to the sure. agents, and she got a hold of it. And they had they got on a Skype call, and she said, "I want to do this." And everything went sort of stopped the one direction it was going, and completely went one eighty the other direction because she's massive. Mm -hmm. um, and she brought it, you know, Megan Fox. Yeah, she brought did. it up and she brought and carried this movie, you know. And it's someone tell me you guys had any training because it seems like you guys legitimately had the, the technique down and everything. I mean, that's some real yeah. choreography there. What sort of training did MJ put you guys through for 40s role? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of us had 
uh, past training that we were able to bring to the table with this because with an independent film, it's like shooting television. It is so fast and dirty yeah. and you just don't have the time or the resources. There was one day we were able to operate together as a team and figure each other's movements and styles out. But other than that, it was sort of bringing in stuff from our past experiences and training on the fly with, with Paul Hornsby, who was our military advisor and some other people who were on set as well. Uh, but look, I mean, this was, this was Megan Fox saying, I want to do it. And MJ going, fine, you're going to have to get dirty. And she said, fine. And so she did. And I mean, you watch the movie and she's seamless, you know, she kills it and she carries the film. She pushes it. She, not only that, like this is, you know, this kind of defies that sort of film of like strong male leads kicking ass and taking names. And she comes in and does it as a kick-ass female. There's two kick-ass females. There's her and there's the lion, right? They're just kicking ass and yep. taking names. <laughs> and there's no romance. It's just, being a badass, I think that I think that really matters, you know. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's a cool thing to see in so many ways too. Like you, you all guy, all of you guys did a great job. That's why I felt like felt natural. I didn't know what sort of training you did in any yeah, right military on. stuff because it came out cool. Where did you guys shoot the movie? We shot it in Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh, you did? You went? Yeah. To wow. So oh. I mean, there that elements in it too, you know. And it was four weeks of night shoots, so we would rock up to set before sunset get some food in us, get some makeup done and get everything rocking and rolling. Then we wait for this, wait for the sun to set so we could film. And when that sun goes down in the bush in South Africa, it comes, I mean, it comes alive. And so you would, we would hear the jackals kick off right as the sun goes down and you've got these massive beetles, you got rhino beetles and all sorts of things flying around in the air and spiders, the size of your hand crawling around. I mean, it's the real deal out there. And you it's sort of real have to experience put yourself off-set. in that. You're dealing yeah, more totally. with offset than you are on set. You're dealing with it. Yeah, you're dealing with it. Oh, that's fascinating. You see, that's what makes it kind of because it looked like it. I'm like, I don't know where they found this location, but it sure looks like it would be in Africa, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, Philip, I wanted to ask you. I obviously enjoyed a lot of your work and Phil, but what are some things you like to do in your free time? I always like asking that question. Where are some hobbies that you have? What are some things that you like to do to get away from, from all the, you know, the industry stuff? Right. I, you know, a part of moving back to Montana where my wife and I grew up was just that it was sort of facilitating a place where we could recharge without the noise. Uh, we, we joked around and we call it the blood in the water because when you're in the city, you're just constantly hunting for that next thing, like that next job. And there's, there's that lie within creatives. I don't know if you deal with this, but like that next job's going to make me happy. Oh yeah. The next yeah. job's going to be the one where I'll, I'll be okay after the next job and the next thing. And it's just, it's such a lie, right? It's you like, never fulfill it in a sense. You never fulfill, right? So to yeah. be able to be content with staring in the, into the present and saying, this is where it's at. This is what's going on. Like that's, that's sort of the gift of COVID for us and time off right now. And being having free time and the free time that we have is for me it's filled with my two daughters and my wife and it's a gift man i mean it sounds cliche but this time we're never going to get it back and yep. they're i got a five-year-old and an 18 month old and they're just kicking my butt <laughs> that's great that's you the know? real work there <laughs> that's the real work right yep. there and so we've we've built a tree house over the last couple of weeks and we've you know, we're going on walks and I'm, I'm being creative with friends in town who are filmmakers. We're trying to get a Western off the ground. I mean, there's lots of little things going, but mostly it's just that space to be still and to watch those girls grow up. And it's, it's that's, a gift. That's, you know, that's something you can never repeat or have back. Yeah. These are the moments you enjoy and take them all in. And this, 100%. Our, you know, this is something that you, you got to do, you know, as a father. So that's so cool to hear. I, I love hearing that. Um, man, I'm in Chicago. If you can bring Peter Stone here, oh, we got some nice, issues. Nice. <laughs> we could use Peter Stone. I mean, oh, man, you could use some Peter Stone over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, uh, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. I, I've been, like I said, a long time fan. And uh, well, Jim, likewise, man, it's always cool to meet people who, who know the stuff and even like the little things like in my sleep, like, yeah, you know, that's a blast from the past, brother. That's oh, awesome. Man. I hope to catch up with you in another fun film that you had right here. Hope to catch up down the road again and talk about Absolutely. The in the meantime, stay safe and enjoy that family time and all everyone healthy. That's the most important thing. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, you stay healthy and thanks for the talk, man. It's really encouraging. Absolutely. I'll have an Italian beef for you. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Philip. Talk bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Torn to pieces. A lion got him.